Boy, that was some picture of... Uh, uh, let me ask you something. Is that the kind of caliber a woman you were getting, like like Richard Roper's girlfriend? I, mean, I feel like I'm in the position of like... Be honest. But, but, just be straight with me. Yeah, were you, did was, you get... Was, like, you look at that and you go... You I've could had, pick her up if you were there that night. It was across the board, but there were women that attractive, for sure. They were that attractive? Yeah. Wow. When you had five in the in the bed with you, you'd have five girls that look like her? No. <laughs> <laughs> right. And I yeah. believe that. That's believable to me. Yeah. When you get five of them, they're, they're, they're you got to have a little smorgasbord. Right. You get a couple of sixes and fours. <laughs> but add it up, that's way over ten. Exactly. <laughs> hey, five twos are a ten. <laughs> Any way you look at it. Uh, all right, that was Richard Roper. Uh, Neil Strauss is here. He's writing the article on Rolling Stone. Uh, Rolling Stone magazine is uh, putting me on their cover. In fact, this is all being done rather quickly because it's the March issue. Right. So we have to get it. We have to wrap it up quick. What is your deadline on the article about me? You're interviewing me today, and when do you have to have your article in? Uh, next week. Next week. Yeah, I'm, I'm promised a follow-up phone call with you. We'll see. Sure. Okay. I'll do it. I was going to ask, is there um, a situation where they go to you, look, we need more or we want more on that area, and you have to come back? Yeah, and they'll always say that. Listen, when we're done, you won't need more. <laughs> when I do an interview, I, give you, I put it all out there, and then you'll have enough. You won't need a follow-up phone call. Look at me. All right. Do you need a follow-up phone call? No. You, you just promised me one a minute ago. Uh, you're not going to need it, though. <laughs> okay. You understand? That'd be amazing. Right. That'd be amazing. I like you a lot better if you don't follow up. <laughs> Listen, I get people in here. I had Bill Murray on for an hour the other day. Right. I get a follow-up. That's it. But you wanted to. You said afterward you wanted to talk to him again. I did. Right. Well, but he doesn't get it. I don't get it. <laughs> right. <laughs> Neither do you. No, I'll, whatever you need, I'll, I'll cooperate. Believe me. Uh, I didn't realize you were so prominent with this pickup book of yours, The Game. Well, we'll see how good he is if he can turn J.D. into a ladies' man. Maybe he can't. I think of me, you're matching him. <laughs> I think we've, no. we've got a challenge for I you. I still don't understand, though, what you're saying. Uh, and okay. I'm not, uh, you know, I, in ahead. other words, okay, you didn't get laid till you were 21. Right. You were, you know, a nebbish. Right. A, uh, you know, a glom. Right. A dweeb. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> yeah. Could you call him more yeah. names? Uh, uh, <laughs> a mishkite. <laughs> you know, you were, you were all these things. Right. And suddenly, you had this epiphany. Right, but it was, it was step by step. Right. And you, said, and you said to yourself, I don't want to go through life not being the guy who, you know, is a wallflower. I don't want to be the scum of the earth for the rest of my life. I want to evolve into something more than that. I want to get beautiful women. Right. And you set out on a plan to discover how to do this? Yeah, well, I mean, I had actually given up because... Clear your throat. Thank you. All right. I'm going to vomit from you. Go ahead. Yes. And so, you're telling me you're getting laid. So, oh, right, go, ahead. Yeah. go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. So, cause, I mean, really, the whole reason I did the Motley Crue book, besides wanting the stories, is I wanted to be backstage with them and have that backstage pass and maybe, like, get some sex going on. Right. Right. So when that didn't happen, I really didn't. I went on tour with them, didn't get laid the whole time. But Even there, you couldn't. Even there, and I literally, and, I, and I, I would literally go get a stack of backstage passes Walk around, hand them out to women. How old were you when you got the epiphany to say, to actually research the thing and really put your mind to it? Like you, you devoted this like a, to a, like a job. Like yeah. I'm gonna learn how to fuck women. Yeah, and I, I'd given up at that point. I literally given up. How old were you at that point? Probably late twenties. Late twenties. Maybe twenty eight, twenty nine. He's walking around with a stack of backstage passes at a Motley Crue concert, right. and he couldn't get laid. Well, of course and, not. First, he's around Mot Motley Crue, right? I, I, and you had lost your hair already at, at this age in twenties. Yeah, but I was, I was in the Rogaine phase. You were in the Rogaine phase. Right. You were losing your hair. How tall are you? Uh, I'm 5'6". Five, six. You're 5'6". Five, six. You're a short guy. Oh, you're, boy. you're balding. <laughs> <laughs> you're a real mess. Right. And yet you said, I am not going to live my life as this loser guy that hangs around and never gets laid. Well, actually, I thought, I'm going to have to live my life as this loser guy who never gets laid. Right. And then... One of Judith Regan's editors found this community online of the secret on online community of pickup artists. Right. He said, why don't you check this out and write a, write a how-to book for me? Oh. oh, so Judith hired you to write the book. Well, well I, sa I said, I pretended like I wanted to do it. I had no interest in writing the book. Right. Um, I just wanted to find out these tips and things. So you were getting paid, because I was going to say to you, this is right. a full-time job. How did you make money during that period? But it, Judith Regan's book company no, I, was I, paying you. Well, here's what's crazy. I was writing for the New York Times at the time. Right. And so when I went into this world, I changed my name because I figured if like the New York Observer or some of those papers that like to bash the Times found out, this Times reporter was posting his entire sex life and frustrations online in this right. community. They so had a pseudonym. Torture me, yeah. So I had no intention to write a book till it got kind of crazy. All right. So 
What was really the big game changer for you? Where you were getting models that looked like Richard Roper's girlfriend, and you were getting like 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 yeah. Super was there right, one tip? Five that girls in bed, right there. I mean, changed it exponentially. There was a moment when I realized. Clear your throat for Christ's sake. <laughs> All right. There was a moment when I realized I got it, but it was a step by step thing. And I think the moment was when I took a workshop, as they call it, with that guy, Mystery, from the VH1 show back okay. before that. Mystery is a guy who teaches. He's a guy who teaches. He's one of maybe 20 guys in this little world. And, and this the... really works because I look at Mystery on that show and I go, I would never talk to him. Because you're looking right. at him like that. He's saying out in the wild, you would look at him. Now, so. And his name is Mystery? Is that his, his pickup name, Mystery? Do you have a pickup name? <laughs> I, d I do. And I did. And the <laughs> what is your name? <laughs> oh, God. It was, it was, uh, <laughs> this is horrible. It was Style. Style. Right. I mean, uh, get out of here. Rolling yeah, Stone. So Wait, like, let me send, me, send me someone else to be in. Let me tell you something. I was, I was, it's a weird fight club thing. I was, I was in the airport coming here. Who gave you that name, Style? Yourself? Or uh, the, I think Mystery gave it to you. And the reason you have these right. is not because like, it's a cool thing. It's because... Pump you up. Because you don't want girls, no, not even to pump you up. You don't want girls you meet to look you up online and find out what you're doing. So you make up just a handle or a code name in the You, you know, introduce chat yourself rooms. to these women as, as style? style? No, of course you not. You could actually Neil. say that? You say, say I'm Neil. Yeah, you give him your name. Okay, yeah. but when he was coaching you and said, you don't want, he calls you style so that you, you're not recognizable. I mean, I was walking through the airport today and some guy said, the security guy goes, oh, hey, style at the at the thing. There's a, it's a weird fight club thing. It's strange. Yeah, my, my, my name was uh, Hook Nose. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they call me. It didn't sound sexy. That's right. And so, and so, what was the game changer? In other words, right. all of a sudden, I'll tell you the moment. You, you had a first conquest. Right. What was the moment? I mean, there were two moments. One was one, one was the first time I went out with Mystery. We went to this place called the Standard in Los Angeles. Go ahead. Uh, there were just a couple couples in there. He says, "I'm going to show you how it's done." Go ahead. Scott Bayo was there with his girlfriend and right. there were two other couples. I said, "Let's leave." Right. He walked, and Scott Bayo's girlfriend was. Gorgeous. And obviously. this guy, Mystery, he, walked he doesn't in. even get intimidated. You're like, let's leave because Scott Bayo's there. We're not going to get anybody Right, that's all couples. You already were feeling, and it's all couples. And he yeah. said, no, 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 we don't leave. Right. We're fucking tonight. Right. Look at this guy. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay, now take me with you. Go ahead. Right. So, yes? So he, he walks up to the group. Scott Bayo's there, two couples. Right. He walks in and over the course of about 15 or 20 minutes, gets this girl to give him her phone number. Which girl? The girl who's there uh, with the Scott guy? Scott Bayo's date. And Scott Bayo's... Scott M Mystery, or whatever his right. name is. Scott Bayo's date. Got the phone number off of Scott Bayo's date. And Scott Bayo literally goes to me, uh, is this... And he does a little bit of magic in his thing. That's his shtick. Yeah. And he goes, is... Uh, is this a trick or is he actually stealing my girlfriend? He literally said something along those lines to me. And that's right. when I said, okay, this is possible. Wow. Yeah, so that was the epiphany. And how did he get the number? By, by doing like his magic trick or something? Or well, this whole thing, the whole thing is you walk in, especially if you're not a good looking guy, you don't hit on the girl, obviously, because right. as soon as you hit on her, she's going to be creeped out. You, got, right. you need to buy some time to show your personality. Right. If she's with guys, you need to win over the guy, show that you're harmless. So he just walks in, starts a casual conversation, pretends as if he's about to leave, so it's harmless, right? Right. And then steps back and is like and says, by the way, I'll show you something interesting and he starts doing the magic. And he's doing it for the guys. And the guys, they're probably bored, right? And they're like, Oh, here's a guy who's entertaining us. That's right. great. And slowly he sort of starts working his way toward the girl. Right. It's really smart. And chicks so it's all subtle. And these chicks, they love magic. And it's it's not they're suckers for that magic. But not Even cheap. my wife who says David Blaine. David Blaine. She's like, oh, and he does that magic. I go, what the fuck is with this magic? Yeah, it's because you do the magic where they don't believe it's magic. So did you take up magic? Was that your thing? It wasn't my thing, but I did learn enough that I could have done like walked around tables and done it. But you, you're not there with it with cards. Right, or, picking up women is hard. It's, it's, it's a, a lot of work. That's, that vagina you got is a gold mine, Robin. <laughs> yeah. You don't use it. Uh, I'm telling you, you don't use it enough. That, that's, that's the main thing. Wow. People think it's threatening, but you realize all the, the crazy extremes these guys go to. But you're so, not doing. So how oh, did you? But, but still, so you're yeah. doing magic tricks at a table, and did did, did magic uh, fuck uh, mystery? mystery? Did he fuck Scott Baio's girlfriend? Uh, he got the phone number. I don't think he ended up sleeping with her. He walked away with the phone number, which to me was enough as a guy who can approach. That was enough in that. And moment. that was an epiphany for you, right? That was an epiphany that that was even possible that a guy, could, a human being, who was so how do you turn do into a stud? Where did you go to go get laid and all this? I mean, from that moment, it was just obsessive, obsessive practice and learning from those guys. And you start, you start small. You just say, if I can do an approach without getting rejected, great. Okay, hmm. now let me do an approach without getting rejected, and now stay in the conversation a little longer so she doesn't want me to leave. Great. And maybe that's another month at work. Next month is now, how can I do, how can I get the phone number, and that's great. And then, for the longest time, right, I could walk in, I could get anyone's phone number, but then, how do you cross the bridge to making out with her? That was yes. the biggest, yes. that was the biggest trouble What was the bridge there? Here, here, here was... Do you want? Do you want to know? Yeah, yeah. I want to know. Yeah. What okay. do you think I'm doing here? We're asking the question. I know right. what it is. Roofies. <laughs> exactly. So, 
so for me, because again, I've been, I couldn't possibly leave a girl would ever find me attractive. So I'd go on dates with these girls. I just couldn't, I couldn't pull the trigger and they would get bored and leave. Right. You know, cause a friend all the time. Right. right. Yeah. So this sounds cheesy to say, but I'll just, I'll tell you what it was for me. Yeah. I, I did this, this, uh, this, so we have, we have little names for the routines we would do. Cause I had like a little script that I just sort of figured out that started working and I can tell you what it, it give me the script okay. damn it you're all embarrassed just do it right, it's called it was called the evolution phase shift routine evolution phase shift routine. <laughs> this sounds horrible but and here's what it was which was you can't just re, if you just kind of make a lunch for a girl even if she wants to kiss you she her autopilot response is to back off a little bit right so what you have to do is start getting her comfortable with touch slowly in a kind of comfortable way yeah how do you do that right so so and this is what I did, and this isn't what I do now, but this right. is what I did to get over that hurdle for myself. Okay. Okay. So the first step was, I knew as an insecure guy, as soon as I think, should I be kissing this girl, it's time to kiss her. It means she's ready, because right. well, why else would I think that? Right. Uh, <laughs> Good thinking. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, yeah, that's what uh, most rapists say. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead. So what, do you, what is the groundbreaking? What so, was the move? So the, so the first, first move is... Second I see a girl, I think I should be kissing her. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> exactly. Right. But go ahead. No, I think, is she ready for it? So the first move is... Uh, I would, I would tell her that she smelled nice, right? Go ahead. And I, I'd lean in, I'd kind of smell her down from like the top of the neck down, down to the bottom of the okay, neck. Okay, you smell them? He em. said it works for dogs, so I don't know. Right. right. And, and, and no, one, no one has a problem with that. No one's going to say you can't smell me. And once you <laughs> lean in and smell her, you're now you're close. close yeah. You're close. And, and then you back off. It's a safe thing. And you, I would discuss a little bit smell and how we're hardwired to respond when people smell us. It's like dogs, they get all the information they need for, from uh, right. about mating and things. It's a, it's a natural response. And I talk about that for a little bit. Right. Really? And the truth is this. Here's the funny thing that I realized after the game. I thought this was maybe a trick to get someone to kiss me. I really realized this is all to make myself comfortable actually kissing her. Right. But I'll give you the rest of it really quickly. Yes. So second move is I talk about hair pulling. That's the other thing I would I would talk about how, you know, kittens it would grab each other by the scruff of the neck and we're yes. kind of wired to respond or lions would bite each other other's manes when making love and and I'd kind of say and my favorite thing when I had hair <clears throat> yeah, was when someone would kind of reach up and pull the back of my hair, and I'd actually do that with her if she didn't have extensions. That's the one. Really? Uh, so I kind of take you her pull and I pull the hair. hair back, and in a, in a very, in a firm, quick, kind of nice feeling way. Really? That was step two. Yeah. That's insane. But at that point, they're not going to have a problem with it. Maybe we've been talking for twenty minutes at okay. that point. If I just met her or something. Okay. Uh, so that was step two. Then you back off a little bit. Step Did you three. ever accidentally pull off a wig like a chick was going through chemo? <laughs> <laughs> no. I, I learned the hard way about the extensions. Okay. So, so the third, the third step, and this is the crazy one, uh, was was I would say, but the most interesting thing, and what you're doing is you're not just getting her comfortable with safe touch, you're also demonstrating you know something about a woman and sexuality. Right. So the third step was I would say, but the best, the best parts of the body, the parts that never see the sunlight, the parts, that, the parts that bend the most, and I'd say like the like that part on the opposite side of your elbow yeah, uh, and that part under your leg. And if she was comfortable with it, I'd touch both parts. Really? And the next step is I, I would say, you know what? Next time you're with a guy, you've got to have him bite you there. It'll drive you nuts. And she'd say, okay. And I'd say, what the hell? I'd grab her arm and I'd bite her right there. Really? Yeah. And literally in the middle of a club, I've done it on planes, all kinds of crazy places. And, and they didn't arrest you. And, yeah, and they didn't. Yeah, and they didn't arrest Robert, me. Robert, this is unbelievable. I'm but, shocked. But but here's why. Here's what. Here's why. Each each step is a compliance te- is a compliance test. If she agrees with each step, you're sort of saying, okay, I can move one step further. And it worked for you. And it worked. Well, it must have. Wow. And the next step was neck biting, and then by that, and then the next step was making out. Go uh, bite uh, Lisa G's neck. Let's see what happens. <laughs> I'll be right yeah, back. Bring her in here. Let's see if we can do <laughs> this. Yeah, right. Do it on you. <laughs> Lucy, you. I know the game, so it wouldn't work. Uh, hi, sugar. You're on the air. Hey now. Hey now. How are you guys? Anyway, um, I've studied with uh, Hypnotica, and I believe him and Neil know each other, and Steve, and it's amazing. I've, I've known Eric for 10 years, and it's true. I've watched him work with women. I've watched everything. and it's, You're it's saying this stuff true. works. Yeah, they're, they're both it, guys I learned from in the book. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah right, they are. Well, hey, listen, what do I know? You're telling me you got a lot, a lot of women? That's good. I don't know what she's talking about. Uh, apparently, she knows all these guys he trained. There are two of the guys besides Mystery I learned from I in the book. Hypnotica. They all have nicknames. I see. Right. <laughs> you all sound fruity to me, but... but I mean, I I th- we were all nerds. We were all hey, Dungeons listen, and Dragons. Players. I think it's terrific. If you get Dungeons guys and Dragons? <laughs> Does the book still sell well? Yeah. All right. Well, that's uh, Neil Strauss. He's supposed to be writing an article on me. I- I'm doing more good for him than he's doing for me. <laughs> you just sold a bunch of books. Right. And listen, the reason I'm doing an interview with Rolling Stone... Is because I want to promote this app. Yeah. That, yeah. Yeah. Make sure it gets in there. Okay. And don't tell me your editor edited it out. No, it's got, they, they said they said it's they said it's got to be in there. Yeah. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah.
Yeah, I mean, listen, I, 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 that's my job here. Right. They make the whole thing the app. But is it weird? Is it weird when so many people come in here trying to plug things to be plugging something and something else? I'll work it in in a, in a creative way. I'm excited to see how you do it. All right. <laughs> Quite frankly, I'm just going to bang you over the head with it. <laughs> and if you start biting my arm, I'll know you're weird. <laughs> right. And don't pull my hair. Uh, anyway, Neil, a uh, pleasure, and congratulations on your book. And you say the book is still selling out there, the game. Yeah, it's fine, yeah. No kidding, it's doing well. Yeah. You still get paid for that. Yeah. That's terrific. Good for you. Can you make a lot of money being a writer for Rolling Stone? Yeah, I do it I do, I do it because I enjoy it. But do you make a lot of money? No. Do you live well? Well, how do you make your money? Just, for, just from, from, the, a, from the books. from Because I've written like six books or so. I see. Like when when Jenna Jameson wrote a book, you got a lot of money. You get an advance, right? Exactly. And then you get a cut of the action. Yeah, you get a cut. Of course, definitely. Wow. Did you give Did you give Ratso a cut of the action or no? Ratso, Ratso's a millionaire yeah. now. He's retired. Thank because he is. <laughs> Ratso went off and wrote a Dylan book. He yes, believe me. Ratso did just fine. Okay. <laughs> All right. Don't trust Neil. He promised to marry me. He fucked me. Then he deserted me. You bastard. <laughs> Is that the computer girl who sits in the arty chair? You fucked her? Well, you are the man. You can pick her up? Yep. Uh, Ralph, go ahead. Hey, now. Hey, now. Boy, this seems like a lot of fucking work just to get laid. It... You know what, Ralph, though? You can be arrogant. You know, Ralph's got a look going. And kind of creepy, too. <laughs> well, it sounds creepy to me, too. Yeah, biting women's <laughs> elbows. But, you know... Ralph's got, he's got a good way. I see how he is with women. He hangs out with them. He's kind of got a natural. Well, he's almost like a girl. Uh, Get him drunk. What Neil, no. Chapter one. No, what Neil is referring to. Ralph, you've got to look. Neil's referring to guys who are bald, are short. They have no self-confidence. You're talking about guys who can't get laid if they're on an on Gilligan's Island with Mrs. Howell. They can't get but, laid. But you know what? Let, let me tell you something. And and by the way, and it was guys and it was guys like that and guys like Richard who make you feel horrible about it anyway. Right. And you're just because you think, okay, either you got it or you don't. But then you realize you can learn it. But let me tell you something. Since I wrote this book, that the people whose lifestyles I envied, big, you know, celebrities and stars and rock stars, will be calling me for advice when they're on dates. Right, And I literally remember interviewing Orlando Bloom for Rolling Stone. I was talking about the book, and he was asking for advice. There's things I'd done he hadn't done. Here, here he was, the, you know, right. at the time, the best-looking most. Every guy feels like he can He might have just like been humoring do. you. I, I don't think Orlando Bloom needs advice of getting laid. Uh, we can I talk about it. D I can promise he wasn't. Yeah. You know, it's, has anyone ever been arrested for biting a girl after reading your book? <laughs> I mean, have got, people gone to jail because they don't exactly do it right? I mean, they, I think people have gotten some black eyes. Uh, officer, guy's this guy just pulled my hair and bit me on my arm. Uh, what do I do? So uh, he's talking about, Neil is talking about guys who have absolutely no rap. You know, yeah. guys who can never get laid. But now this sounds like a full-time job, though. I mean, it is. Well, it, it is. It is a, a job. lot of work. You can, you can afford to laugh at it because I've seen him. He, he can move and groove. Yeah, he's yeah. Got, and he's he got the a, hair and the I'd look. I'd suit myself if I had to go through that to get laid. Oh, well, on. you know what? You're being a big shot. But a lot of guys out there can't get laid, and you know it. Well, listen, I know what he's saying. Just have some confidence. That's how Wait, let me, can, I, can I ask you a, a question? Though? I'm curious because a lot of guys who are naturals, right, like yourself, what, what age did you lose your virginity at? Come on. You, oh, you're asking me? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I, listen, I don't think I have a lot of self-confidence, but I, I think... What I'm age did late. you lose Answer it? That's question. And I'd say... Does a like, priest count? Late, no. <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> to a girl. Okay. How old were you when that priest tried to get up your ass? <laughs> That was, I was a young 14. When did you lose your... I was out of high school, like first year out of high school. Yeah, he so, uh, like he didn't nine, do that well with women. Right. 19. Like I, you know what? You'd right. be surprised. I got laid at 16. Really? I did. I didn't oh, get yeah. laid. I, I got, got tons of girls. I got my shit together. I started smoking pot, and that loosened right. me up. That was great. So that's good advice, too. So just take drugs. Because I noticed <laughs> most of the guys who, are, who need the help either lost their virginity at late age, because if you go through puberty, just wanting to lose your virginity so badly, you just become nervous around women, and they're also raised in, like, mother-dominated families. Yeah. For some reason. I would go I would go on streaks. I would get a lot of girls, and then I would get no girls for years. Right. It was but, bad. I was listen, consistent. The best, the best piece of advice is you can't go into a room, you can't go into a club and look desperate. Women can smell that sure. a mile away. You just go and hang and have a good time, and they'll come to you. Right. But what if you are desperate? Yeah, but, <laughs> what if you smell exactly, the desperation? Exactly. <laughs> All right, thank I you. Help you with that. You know, I know what you're talking about. You're talking about a guy, short guy, loses his hair. He's, he's, he's never gotten scored with women. How do you get that confidence, and how do you get the ball rolling? This girl you're living with now, right? How long are you with her? A year. A year, yeah. 
What uh, what does she look like? Is she a 10? I mean, I think she is, yeah. You show me a picture of her. Okay. okay? You got yeah. one? Yeah, I have one on my phone, yeah. You got it right now? Yeah. Let me see it. Okay. Let me see what you have. I mean, I, but then I I'll know if you're for real or okay, not. Okay, but I, I will say this, and, and I'm not making an excuse for it because I think she's she's really a gorgeous girl. She put on a few pounds recently? No. <laughs> all right, go ahead. <laughs> uh, no, no, I, that, I, that I will say is before this, I thought all I wanted to do was have sex with super hot girls and Understood. models and strippers and porn stars. Right. And when it comes to a relationship, and I'm not saying this is the cheesy ending, but it is true. I'd give anything, anything for like a stable, awesome, great. Well, let woman. me tell you something. Yeah. It sounds like you make a watch. This woman look like Susan Boyle, and your whole gig is going to be. <laughs> <laughs> She's stable, awesome, and great. Right. You got headphones on. Don't uh, don't hurt yourself. Come over here. I got to be nice to Neil too. You know, I mean, he's writing an he's article. He's writing an article. Don't yeah, don't fuck me don't over. Don't piss him off by saying something bad about his lady. Oh, whoa, no, she's hot. I can give you a what? No, her. she's. You got a better one? I mean, give me a better one. You got any? You, what do you have? Uh, I can tell you where a website is. She's got a website. She's got a website. What is she doing? Here, get on the mic. No one can hear you. And this important stuff. Oh no, she's hot. I mean, she. I she's can tell hot. You, yeah, I can tell you her website, but but I don't want to like be plugging her or something like that on here. So, but I'll tell you. Go ahead. Give it to it's me. It's ggamore.com, G I G I A M O R dot com. G I G I A M O R dot com. Yeah, she sells like swimsuits, but she really doesn't have them mass produced, so don't go ordering no, but, but she's the model on the. You know what? I believe your book. Okay. I, you proved it to me. I can see who you're fucking. <laughs> right. That's you all know, it takes. It's all bullshit. She's until selling you... bathing suits. You know she's hot. Benji, you look up GG on I'm more immediately. Holy shit. Is that her laying yeah. down? The yeah. Show? Let me see that. Turn that around. How dare you see that before me? You're not supposed to look. I think that oh, is Richard wow. Roper's girlfriend. Oh, look at that. I know. that It looks like her. That's why I was staring at it. I was like, it kind of has the same body type as my girlfriend. Wow, that's yeah. your girlfriend, yeah. huh? He's making excuses? You don't have to make any excuses, pal. She's got bite marks all over her. Yeah, <laughs> look at her arm. Looks like she's a heroin addict. <laughs> any more pictures of her on that website? Is there? Yeah, they're all over the website, yeah. Is she on Mr. Skin? Show me more. she ever do porn? Go to shop. No, she shop. never. She would never. Oh, wow. Wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. She's got a nice body. Let me see. Scroll down. Wow, you are the man. And you're are you engaged to her? Hopefully one day. How old is she? Uh, she's twenty six. No shit. Yeah. And you got her? That book is worth a million dollars. <laughs> Stop it. Now that the proof is in the pudding. Does she's, she, she's does not she that, live with you? Yeah, she just moved in like two weeks ago. Beautiful. How long have yeah. you guys been on going out? For a year. She give you anal? Um, I think we I think we might have tried once. You remember if you do. No, no, I, I think it didn't go all the way in. Did it? You're <laughs> no. pretty thick, huh? Mine I, think, would, I think so. Mine would go in with ease. <laughs> right. Right into her. No kidding. Yeah. No, you, did you get mud on the turtle? No, no mud. No mud. Yeah. But you know, you know what? The, like, but really, the toughest thing is untraining yourself from doing the pickup stuff. When right. You're seeing, like, you got to turn it off. you got to turn it off. When her hot friends come over, you go into pickup mode, huh? Or just you're, you're on the plane, yeah. someone's walking by, you're <laughs> right. in the street. Yeah. Jesus. Boy, she's some catch. And she's, and she's, and I'm not just saying, she's per personality perfect. Just Is she great in bed? You know what? She's, she's semi inexperienced. She's really good in bed, but not great yet. Right. You're going to yeah. teach her. Oh, you're going to fix her. Yeah. <laughs> oh, this time. This time. <laughs> what doesn't she do right? <laughs> she's not to give her a good BJ? <laughs> Dude, really? Do, uh, yeah, I'm being serious. <clears throat> we can talk. No one's listening to this shit. <laughs> she, she listens to this show all the time. Grubble, grubble, grubble. Nobody's listening today, believe me. All right. People are busy. <laughs> this is the 9 o'clock hour. I've, I've never even told her this. Go ahead. This is going to ruin everything. Don't thing. worry. You'll get another one. <clears throat> Clear your throat. You, you can pick up someone else. <clears throat> yeah. so, so the, What's the matter with you? She, he needs water. We're just, <laughs> we're He's got water. I gave him water. <laughs> really? Oh I, I, was on the, I was on the red eye. She, she, oh, this sounds horrible. But go ahead. No, she, I think, I think she, she, just doesn't, she doesn't get like super wet. I see. Oh my God! Is that is that horrible? Is that? Oh mm, my you, God! You bang her bareback? Uh, yeah, and she has orgasms and everything. She just doesn't right. get super wet. So what are you going to do to correct that? I, I got to do something now because I just said it on the Howard Stern show. <laughs> <laughs> Did you tell her this, or is she? Oh, you never said it to her. No, I never said it because I don't want to make her self conscious. But about is that it. your problem? You're not getting her hot enough. How much we'll foreplay? Do you go down on her? I mean, my last girlfriend was like a squirter, so maybe right. I got God. spoiled by that. Do you go yes. down on her? You were yeah, of course, I love going star. down on her. And she has and she has multiple orgasms. So I don't think it's the pleasure thing. I think it's just a... I was with a chick thing. once who was pretty dry, and I just right. took it personally. I was kind of like, you know what? She's not that into me. Yeah. Because if she's dry, I mean, she's not that into me. If you it, know what I mean? Yeah, and if you call attention to it, it just makes them more self-conscious and more dry, so you don't say anything. I think some of these young girls are dry all the time. But how much foreplay is there? Are you, are you good at that? What is yeah, that? I, I'm a good, busy I'm, writer. No, I'm good at the... I'm, 
And that's one of the things that the, the caller who mentioned Steve P. Yeah. Uh-huh. He taught me all kinds of crazy sexual techniques. Well, looking at the uh, clitoris thing? Some looking <laughs> stuff, something that he called stacking orgasms, all yeah. kinds of weird techniques. So you know all the positions and Kama Sutra, and she's still not getting that wet. Yeah, because he studied that stuff. And it, it might be yeah. a biological thing. I don't know. Do you rub her, um, her uh, vagina while you're uh, banging her? Yeah, some, some, yeah, I do that either with my hand or with my pelvic bone. Does yeah. she have to like like wet her vagina down with her fingers in order to get you in there? Yeah, it's the only girl I've ever, I've ever had to do that with. Yeah, that's a, that could be a deal breaker. It's not going to be a deal breaker. You know what? Because here's the thing. And, and this, look at what this anal you couldn't even get in there. This is where, after the game, here's where I messed up, right? Yeah. I chose girls for sexual reasons. Like, I can never get that hot, beautiful club girl. Right. You know, I can never get the stripper or the porn star. Right. And, and, uh, and, and, and one, in a conversation with a friend who, uh, who, who we probably both know, a producer friend who we know, but he said, you gotta choose girls not for sexual reasons, but for intimacy. And, and the intimacy can last yeah, but this chick's sex. gotta learn to get wetter. We gotta get rid of her. <laughs> I mean, come on. It's still good sex. It's still good sex. It is good. Yeah. It's but just, it, doesn't it hurt after a while? Cause it's, she's dry? I mean, she'll, she'll get wet enough. She does. Yeah, it's not mind blowing. You said it was a great and it's just really right, good. Right, right, right. I'm gonna get killed. What about a lube? You know what? I've never used lube. I can try the lube. Maybe thing. you got to lube her up. Yeah. I mean, I know it's a defeat, but you got to lube her I up. I think I've just ruined my entire sex life. <laughs> you probably did. <laughs> Thanks. See, I hope you. I wish you was I hope, good. I wish you was good an interview with me that I'm having with you. I know. I hope. I hope you're just giving. Right. One thing about my Robin, she's always wet. I'm ready to go. <laughs> Right, Robin? Absolutely. This right. is a great interview. Oh, no, that's not what I asked you. Oh. You just said absolutely. I said one thing about my Robin, she's always wet. And, oh, and you said absolutely. absolutely. <laughs> well, let me tell you something. Don't you take it personally when the girl doesn't get that wet? Because that's what happened to me with this one girl. She's right. a very young girl, by the way, when I was with her. Right. You know, it was before Beth. Right. Well, um, how old? Well, remember I told you I was with someone and I didn't ask their age. I just assumed they were older. It turned out she was 21 and that oh, was like very uncomfortable for me. And I, right. couldn't, I couldn't continue. But I remember she was very dry. Right. Well, sometimes it takes mm. a little while for a woman to hit her sexual peak. I just figured she looked at me like a praying mantis. Yeah. And I probably got like, turned off. I, you, took it, I took it personally. Yeah. Yeah, you do. And, but I noticed if you say something... It'll ruin it, so you just wait and you take your time. And as they get more comfortable, once they're comfortable, they like. But you've been with this chick a year and nothing's happening. Yeah, She's not getting any wetter. Maybe she needed the move. In. But I, I would rather her not get wet than her not having orgasms. At least she's coming. Right. Right. Well, but I remember hitting true. a certain yeah, point in my sexual career mm-hmm. when it was like, whoa. And that was when, you know, full lubrication and everything. You mean you yeah. were dry for years, Robin? Uh, not years. I was a young person. Oh, so maybe and, it's her youth. And I didn't know what I was doing. You, you mean you didn't know... But but what do you mean you didn't know what you're doing? How can you control well, you getting wet? Well, you don't know what to look for, what to expect, and you know people are you starting too early, you know, uh, and stuff like you know. So you it takes up. a little time to yeah. get that all right. Oh. and then I remember, you know, like in this one relationship, I was like, whoa, that's yeah. what people are talking about. So how long is it going to take for this girlfriend <laughs> and then, to learn? And it should what, be coming in any time. Right. Now. I've been talked to Robin, <laughs> and that's and once the floodgates open, they stay open, yeah, right? The body yeah. knows this is this is normal. Right. It's like girls who are. Like when they're squirting for the first time, they think they're going to pee the whole time. And once they finally let go and they realize it's not pee, you and this squirting. Ooh. He's into it. Listen, I just hate that. This guy's been in a lot of. I, I, it's scenes. such a horrible word, right? <laughs> it is. Is that, it's the word, right? Robin, you want to squirt? I'm going to you know squirt. You know, I'll tell you. I'll tell you when why. When are you going to learn to squirt? <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you why the squirting obsession. Because I just realized now while we're talking, because it's like guys really want to make girls squirt, and girls care. They, sometimes they care less, but I think it's like care little or no, a, not but, at all. But it's an ego thing. It's like okay, if she's ejaculating too, I know she's. It's a pleasure thing. It's like oh, I'm giving her. You know, it's an ego. It's a male ego thing. Oh, you guys. Guys, it's like a ejaculation. Like We're not you. like you. I, like I know. I, I know you all too well. <laughs> well, uh, Neil Strauss. The book is called. Uh, Forget it. We're not plugging. We're, we're just talking. <laughs> the <about> game. <laughs> well, hey, I'll plug your book. Just make sure you plug my app. Okay, done. Okay. That's what I'm. Believe me, I ain't sitting with for you for another two hours for my health. <laughs> right. I mean, an hour and a half. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Listen. Let's take a break. A lot has been said. Probably a lot of things that shouldn't have been said. Uh, yeah, they'll probably be played at Gary's next meeting, your, board meeting. Your girlfriend is very <laughs> smoking hot. Okay, she has one drawback. She's completely turned off to you and she's dry. <laughs> <laughs> so what? Who cares? She's yours. Oh, man. All right, we'll take a, we'll take a break. <laughs> Why don't you get on the phone to that girlfriend quick? And uh, we'll be back right after these words. <laughs> 